Right, so today we are playing some higher stakes than normal on Hustler Casino Live. But before we head down there, let me give you guys a quick tour of the new apartment. Right, so I just moved into Anaheim. Uh, not really sure how exciting 800 square feet can be, but here it is, still a bunch of boxes and stuff still getting settled in. But anyway, today is not about apartments, it is about poker. And today is day two of my uh, double session episode at Hustler Casino Live. Yesterday I played, so we're about to get into those hands as well. But before we do, I wanted to share a quick announcement with you guys, and that is, you know, if you guys are new to the channel, you probably don't know, but I spent a lot of time playing online on Club GG right from my mobile phone. And this Halloween, there are gonna be three free roll tournaments as well as a tournament series. More details on that exact series later on. But these three free roll tournaments are guaranteed already. There's a total of $10,000 up for grabs across the three days. So if you guys are interested in that, hit the link in the description to join, it's really easy. And if tournaments aren't really your thing, like me, there's plenty of cash games available. Sometimes I don't feel like driving down to the casino 20 minutes, so I play right from the comfort of this couch. So yeah, if any of that sounds good to you guys, sign up and uh, there's a good chance you'll see me on there. But anyway, back to today's developments. And like I said, it's day two of Hustler Casino Live. Tonight, the game is 5-5-100, meaning well, I've explained it a few times, but essentially it's like a 25-50, 100. Last night we played 25-50. Often the $100 straddle was on as well. So two big games coming up, or rather big for me. And like I said, I already played yesterday. So without any further ado, let's get into those interesting hands before continuing on today's adventures. <laughs> Alright guys, here we are underway at Hustler Casino once again. This time we're playing 25.50. The $100 straddle will often be on, but not for this first hand. I sit down with $50,000 to start and early on look down at Ace King. Good enough for a raise I think, so I make it 150 and get no less than 4 callers. That's right, just a standard 5 ways to a flop here, which comes pretty good. It's Ace 3-3 three, three with 2 spades. All things considered, a very good flop for me as I've got top pair, top kicker, but despite having top pair, against four other opponents, it would be almost impossible to be bluffing. So for that reason, when it gets to me, I decide to check it and action checks all the way around. Turn card is a 10 of diamonds, introducing a second flush draw, and now suited Superman leads out from the big blind for $200. Raising doesn't make a whole lot of sense, I think, so I just call. And then action gets to Tal in late position, who raises it up to $1,100. Suited Superman folds, now it's back on me. My hand is way too strong to let go at this point, although I'm not feeling super thrilled about it because I don't really think he'd be raising with a worse hand necessarily. But of course I make the call and we go to a river, which is the nine of spades, bringing in the front door flush. I check it over to him, but this time he decides to check it back. Seems like a good sign to me, and sure enough, we beat a smaller ace. So not a huge pot or anything, but we're off to a solid start. In the next interesting hand, I look down at king-queen offsuit. This time the straddle is on, so I open it up to $300. And once again, we go five ways to a flop, getting four callers yet again. This time we see another lucky flop, queen-9-4. Action checks to me, and on a board like this, I think I can have some bluffs occasionally, even against a bunch of players, so this time I do decide to continue betting $500 and get two callers. Still looking good, and especially so when the turn is another queen, giving me three of a kind, and usually in a situation where it doesn't look like I'm gonna have that, I think. Francisco checks it over to me, and I decide to bet small yet again, one third pot. And interestingly enough, DK on the button jams all in for $2,700 total. Action gets back around to Francisco, and much to my surprise, he calls the all in with me left to act. Not entirely sure what to make of this. It seems almost impossible that Francisco would have spades, so maybe he could have a hand like Jack 10 for an open ender, but even at that, I don't think he would be calling an all in with me left to act behind him. So with all that in mind, I feel like he 
probably has either a full house or a queen himself. So that brings the question back around to me of whether I want to call or raise yet again, putting in a three bet on the turn, not something you see a lot. And after thinking it over for a little while, I decide to just call in position and see what Francisco wants to do on the river. So with over 10,000 already in the pot, we're off to see one last card, which is a good one. The six of hearts shouldn't really change anything. And I feel even better about it when Francisco checks it over to me. Now, I don't really think he has much here. Obviously, as you guys can see, he's actually got a very strong hand with queen eight. So we're coolering him here. But in the moment, I didn't really think he probably had a queen. More likely, he has a hand like ace nine suited, maybe a non-believing pocket tens or pocket jacks that doesn't want to give up on the turn. So with all those holdings in mind, I think betting big wouldn't make a lot of sense. That's also true because this is a dry side pot. So you don't really see a lot of big bets into dry side pots on the river. After thinking all that over, I decided to go for a pretty small bet of $2,400 which of course Francisco snap calls. Yet again, I didn't know he had such a strong hand. If I did, I would have bet a lot bigger, but we take another one down and things are off to a good start. In the next one, the straddle is on yet again and Wesley opens on my right to $300. I'm next to act in middle position with ace 10 offsuit. I think this is a hand that you could either fold or re-raise with. It's not really strong enough to just call in the middle of all these players. So I decide to take the aggressive route this time and bump it up to 1000. Action gets back to Wes who makes the call. So we're gonna go heads up in position to a very good flop of king, jack, full rainbow. Well, I guess it's not very good since, you know, I just have ace high and a straight draw, but you guys get the idea. It's a good board for me, generally one that's not gonna be very good for him. So for that reason, I bet small and he makes the call. Turn card is another king. Again, a card that's generally gonna favor me. So I see no reason to stop betting. This time I put in $1,200 and after a few seconds, he lets go of pocket threes. So another good result here. In the next one, there's four limpers. That's right, just four limps at a 25-50 game. And it gets to me in the big blind with queen nine offsuit, no reason to raise it up. So I check my option and we go five ways to a flop, which comes nine high. I decide to lead out here, not something I would do every single time on a board like this with top pair, but this time I do $150 and only DK makes the call on my left. So we're gonna go heads up to a turn, which is the king of clubs. I think this is pretty much a blank. We can continue to get value from worse hands and draws, you know, stuff like that. So I put in another bet, this time $500. And once again, DK makes the call. River is the queen of spades. And now we have a decision between betting or checking. Sure, you can make a case for betting because you know we've got two pair, so that's a good hand. You usually put money in with that. But when you think about it a little more deeply, one of the main draws is Jack-10 and that gets there. And everything else, I guess, misses. Hands like six, seven, or really any seven, or perhaps a hand that turns clubs like I don't know, six, four of clubs, you know, hands of that nature. So I think there's more value in actually checking and letting him bluff with all those missed draws. That's what I do this time. And a little to my surprise, he does bet 1600, which of course I call right away and we end up winning, but he had a pretty decent hand to just check back and get to showdown with ace eight off suit. I guess you could make a case for bluffing with that one, but uh, yeah, happy to take this one down as well. And that brings us to the last hand of this particular stream where I've got 10-7 suited. In this one, I'm in the $100 straddle, suited Superman limps in from the small blind and I decide to kick it up to 400. He makes the call and we go to a flop of queen, queen, nine with one spade. Decent board to continue betting, I think, so that's what I do, and he makes the call. We get some help on the turn as the eight of spades arrives, giving me an open-ended straight draw as well as a flush draw. Plus I could represent some strong hands as well. So I decide to continue betting this time $500 and we get the job done yet again against pocket threes. So that was the last relatively interesting hand of this session. As you guys could see, things went pretty well for me, but I didn't win any huge pots. I also lost a few very small pots, but you know, those add up. Anyway, those were all the interesting hands from this stream. Let's move on to day two. Right, so as you guys saw, a whole lot of nothing for me really. It wasn't the most eventful stream I've ever had. I was mostly card dead and uh, the few hands I did play didn't turn out to be anything crazy, but I think today might be a little bit different. Hopefully we don't get into uh, too many tough situations. But yeah, I'm actually running a few minutes behind, so. Time to turn off the AC, turn off the lights, you know, you gotta save on bills, and drive down to Hustler Casino. Let's go. All 
All right, guys, here we go once again. This time we're playing 5-5 five, five with 100 Annie, and most of this day, the $200 straddle was on. So essentially, this game is like a 100-200, and it's much bigger than it sounds initially when you hear the blinds 5-5. Five, five. But anyway, we're going to start things off with, yet again, Ace-King. I know you guys can't see my cards, but uh, trust me, that's what I had. And this hand goes down just like this. Mars opens the button to $400. I've got some very powerful cards, so I kick it up to $2,000 from the small blind. And the action gets back to Mars, who, after some deliberation, decides to raise yet again, this time making it $7,000. Now we have a decision between either calling and going to a flop out of position or jamming all in for around $35,000 more. I think you could make a case for both plays, but against the button open and me being in the small blind, I think Mars could be a little out of line here, at least often enough to make jamming all in a viable option. Plus, Ace-King could be a little bit tricky to play out of position, and he really doesn't have that much compared to his $7,000 bet. So after weighing all the options, I do decide to rip it all in, and he doesn't snap call, which is always a good sign, especially when there's over $40,000 on the line. As you guys can see, he's got Ace-Queen, so we have him in pretty bad shape. And after a few seconds, he does come to that realization as he lets it go. So no flop in this hand, but starting off with a $7,000 pickup, nothing to complain about. In the next one, we're playing yet again against Mars. He raises this one up to 300, and I look down at 6-4 suited on the button. Club variety this time. Being on the button, I think calling quite a few hands is totally fine, this one included. Sometimes raising would probably be acceptable, but this time I do decide to just call. We end up going heads up to a rather attractive looking flop of king 8-7 with two clubs. Still just six high for me, but that's a straight draw and a flush draw all at once. So when he continues with a $400 bet, I'm gonna raise right away. Would also be doing this with hands like 8-7 suited, pocket eights, pocket sevens, you guys get the idea. So I make it 1400 and as you guys can see, Mars has top pair. He's not going anywhere just yet, so he calls. We get some help right away on the turn as the nine of clubs arrives, giving me a flush and also a straight flush draw, which is worth mentioning. Anyway, this time he checks it over to me and I'm gonna continue getting some value since, you know, flush is a pretty good hand. This time I put in $2,100 and yet again, Mars makes the call. So situation is looking pretty good until the deuce of clubs comes on the river, meaning any hands like Ace King, pocket aces, king queen, king jack that contain a club are now beating me. He checks it over to me and of course, you're probably thinking just check it back. We've got six high flush on a four club board. It's not very valuable, but to that I would argue there's a lot of hands he has that don't contain a club, especially when I can account for two of them and you know, there's four of them out there. And betting a small flush on a four flush board, I think is okay against certain players who are capable of talking themselves into a call. And I do think Mars could potentially be one of those guys. If he has a hand like pocket kings or two pair, he might just get married to the hand. He could also sometimes have a straight which doesn't want to fold. And plus, I would be bluffing with quite a few hands. So sure, you can make a case for checking back, which I would not hate at all, but I do decide to go for some thin value here with a half pot sized bet. As you guys can see in this particular instance, I kind of look like an idiot as Mars does end up calling with the queen of clubs, so things don't work out for me. But often enough, albeit not very often, I think we're getting value from some worse hands, so I don't necessarily hate it. But we end up losing this one after a somewhat unlucky river card. And with that, we move to this next hand where I've got ace 10. I know you guys can't see it yet again, but I've got the Ace of Diamonds and the Ten of Spades. Raise it up to 200 and get called by just Mike X on my left. We go to a flop of 987 with two diamonds. Pretty good board. I've got an open ended straight draw, two over cards, and I could represent a flush if it does arrive since I've got the Ace of Diamonds. With all that in mind, I continue with a $200 bet, and Mike makes the call. Turn card is the five of spades. Not really a good one for me. I could still have hands like jack 10 suited or even 10 six suited occasionally since this is a single raised pot. And I of course could have a six. So I decide to go for a very optimistic check raise after Mike puts in $600. I've seen him stab with a lot of hands that I don't necessarily think he should. For example, I do think he would be betting a nine in this instance, maybe even a hand like jack eight suited or you know stuff like that which I think we can punish with a check raise here. And I've also got a 10, like I said, which makes it a little less likely he's got the nuts. 
So I do decide to make it 3,000 after a few seconds, but Mike makes the call. River card doesn't change anything. It's the queen of spades. There's 7,000 in there. And now it's time to go for glory or just play it safe and give up. We don't necessarily have the best bluffing candidate with a diamond in our hand and just a naked 10. And let's be honest, this guy's probably not folding a six. But uh, in the moment, I go for the very ambitious bluff of pot and a half, $10,000 into the middle, which of course Mike wastes no time in matching. And we're going to be losing this one. Not my best hand ever. And uh, yeah, that's just how it goes sometimes. Life goes on. And by life goes on, I mean we pick up ace 10 yet again in this next one. This time we're facing a raise from tall to $300. And once again, like I said earlier in this video, with ace 10 offsuit in the middle, I think folding is more often than not going to be the play, but occasionally going for the aggressive route is totally acceptable, and this is one of those times. By the way, I do get some comments where you guys say, oh, you do the aggressive thing every single time, or something along those lines. It might seem that way because those are the hands I include, but trust me, there's times where I'm folding these hands and of course not including it in the vlog because that's not very interesting. But anyway, with that out of the way, I do raise it up this time to $1,000. When action gets back to tall, he makes the call. So we're gonna go heads up to a flop of queen five three with two clubs. He checks it over to me and this is just a board where I'm gonna be able to take it down a lot, either on the flop or on the turn or even on the river for that matter. So I continue with a bet of $700 and he makes the call. Seems likely he's got either a queen, maybe a hand like jacks, tens, nines, eights, you get the idea. So when the turn comes to the nine of spades, I think a lot of those holdings are still going to be in a tough situation against a big bet and some continued aggression. And I could also represent spades if they come in since I've got the ace of spades. Could also maybe represent jack 10 suited if it comes to that. But anyway, all these factors going on, I decide to continue betting. $3,000 this time. But Tal is undeterred and calls once again. When he makes the call, I think it's very unlikely he's got a flush draw. People don't generally call pot size bets out of position with just a draw. So when the river comes a six of clubs, I think he's mostly going to hate this card. Hands like king queen suited, queen jack suited, maybe even ace queen are all going to be in a really tough spot against a big bet here. But on the other side of that, you can argue that we don't have the best candidate to bluff with. I'd much rather have the ace of clubs in my hand or just any club for that matter, like king jack with a club or, you know, you guys get the idea. But I get a little bit stubborn in this hand and after playing with Tal for a few hours, I think we could get away with quite a few bluffs in this instance. Like I said, if he has king queen or any sort of red cards, I think they're going to go in the muck. With $10,000 in the middle, I think it over and eventually pull the trigger for a double pot-sized bet. $20,000 into $10,000. Much to my disappointment, however, Tal pretty quickly shows me that he's got the ace of clubs. That's not something I want to see because I'm representing a hand like ace x of clubs. With him having that, it makes it obviously much less likely that I have it. Actually, it just makes it impossible. But I guess you could argue that he's also removing the card that I would be bluffing with. So maybe he's going to talk himself into me not having a flush. Maybe having a hand like Kings or maybe a small flush, for example. But after a few painful minutes, Tall does eventually make the call with Ace, Queen, Ace of Clubs. And if I'm being honest, he's got the perfect hand to call with. It's unfortunate that he has that exact combination of ace-queen. I feel like against any red variety of that holding, we would have got away with it, but not this time, and the ambitious route does not work out. We're going to lose a big one here. In this one, there's a couple of limps for $5 before yours truly looks down at queen three suited on the button. Raise it up to $300. Not necessarily recommended with a hand like this, but I thought it was a good table to do it at. And also, let's be real, things aren't going very well for me, maybe getting a little bit impatient. And I think that's very apparent when Johnny Vibes raises out of the big blind to 1500 and I decide to call on the button. Now, I'll be the first to say calling a re-raise from a tight player with queen three suited, probably not your best route, but we are on the button and relatively deep stack. So I think we could win on a lot of favorable boards. And that's exactly what we get. Eight, seven, five with two spades. It's going to be very tough for him to hold on on a board that favors me so much. And uh, turns out it's not going to be very difficult at all as Johnny just has ace high. He checks it over to me. I bet one third the size of the pot, $1,000, and he lets it go right away. So not a huge pot or anything, but, you know, a moral victory more so than anything. 
And with that, we arrive at a much more interesting hand, at least in my opinion. So here we go. In this one, the $200 straddle is on. Mars opens to $600, and I look down at 6-5 suited next to act. Once again, a hand that I think plays a little bit better as a re-raise. Calling is probably okay on the button or in the big blind, straddle perhaps, but in middle position where I can get squeezed from someone behind me, I'd rather just raise myself. So that's what I do, making it 2200 to go. And action folds all the way back around to Mars, who after some thinking decides to call. Heads up in position to a good flop of ace 10 seven with two diamonds. Mars checks it over to me and I've got a flush draw on an ace high board which is usually going to be good for me since I raised before the flop. So for all those reasons, I see no reason not to bet. This time I put in $1,400 and get check raised to 6000 Getting a little bit sick of it at this point. Seems like nothing is going my way in this session, but trying to just shake all those emotions and play as well as I can. And that's the case in this hand. So I quickly just gathered myself back together and realized that the most logical play here is to just call and see what happens. Turn card is the king of clubs. As you guys can see, Mars has a total stronghold on this hand with aces up and the nut flush draw. But even despite that, he decides to slow down and check it over to me after check raising the flop. Now with action back on me, I think pretty much all my hands want to continue with a small bet. This board is just so good for me and I would be doing that with bluffs as well like I am this time. So after some calculating, I put in $5,500, right around one third the size of the pot. And luckily this time Mars does not check raise, which would have sucked a second time, but instead just calls. We're looking for some help here on the river and what do you know, it does not arrive. It's the king of spades. I wouldn't call it a total brick because I could definitely have hands like king X of diamonds, uh, king queen you guys get the idea king jack suited so all things considered i think it's a good card for me you could make the argument that mars also has those hands as a possibility and i think he does but i definitely could have those hands as well let's face it i've got six high and i'm not going to check it back mars checks it over to me and with all my strong hands such as ace king pocket kings pocket tens queen jack suited trip kings you guys get the idea i would be betting around the size of the pot so with a bluff it's time to do the same thing i count out twenty eight thousand dollars and throw it over the line and we don't get snap called always a sight to see but we're definitely not out of the woods yet perhaps this is going to be another big pot that we lose it's time to wait and see what happens After a few painful minutes, Mars finally decides to fold. Whew, finally, we get one through. Today is going a lot more rough than the day before. Seems like we don't ever really have a hand having to work for every single pot. Luckily, this one works out. And with that, we move to yet another interesting hand. I open it up to $500 with Ace Deuce of Diamonds. Johnny Vibes re-raises on my left to $1,700. Not a very big size considering how deep we are. So with a suited ace, when it gets back to me, I decide to call. Wouldn't really hate folding this hand either, but this time we do see a flop, which comes queen eight four with two diamonds. I check it over to him and he bets $2,000. Think he's gonna be doing this with a lot of air balls. So check raising definitely has merit and could balance that out with hands like pocket eights, pocket fours, maybe the occasional pocket queens and even ace queen against such a small size. So I do kick it up to $10,000, and not very surprisingly, Johnny makes the call. He does tend to play some pretty good cards most of the time, so I'm not surprised he continues. Turn card is okay, it gives me a little bit more help. It's the deuce of hearts. Now that we turn a pair, I think there's some merit to continue into bluff, but I decide to check it, just like I would with all those aforementioned hands. Johnny does not have that idea in mind though, but instead bets $20,000. This was a little bit unexpected. I figured he would mostly check or bet small, so betting pot size is something I wasn't really anticipating and something I'm definitely not happy to see. But it does open up the door to a pretty rare but cool play that you can pull off once in a blue moon, and that is the double check raise. Unfortunately for me though, Johnny's got only $33,000 behind, 
So after putting in over half his stack, I don't think there's much expectation that he'll fold. So with that in mind, we can either call and try to improve to trips, perhaps aces up, or obviously a flush, or just let it go since we're not getting very good odds after he bets $20,000. But even if he bets big, we do have some implied odds if we improve, assuming he does call a bet on the river or tries to go for some thin value. So like I said, it's a close spot, but after a few seconds, I do decide to call and we do get some help finally on this stream, the five of diamonds, giving me the nuts, the best possible hand, not something I've said all day long. And now we have a question between leading out or checking it over to him. Against some players who I think would go for some thin value with Maybe a hand like aces with the ace of diamonds, ace queen with the ace of diamonds, kings with the diamond. You guys get the idea. I would check it over to them, but Johnny, I don't think will necessarily do that. So instead, I decide to lead out for a very small size of $23,000. Could also be doing this with hands like eight, nine suited, maybe some missed heart draws, maybe a hand like six, seven of hearts. You guys get the idea, but my small size does reflect that I won't be bluffing super often. As you guys can see, Johnny's got ace queen of spades. Now it's a very miserable spot for him. But after thinking it over for a while, he does eventually come to the right conclusion and let it go. So we don't get the little extra value on the river that we wanted. Well played by him. But either way, I'm happy to finally win a big pot. So with things finally heading back towards the right direction, only stuck a little bit now. And this hand comes up where I open 9-7 offsuit in late position. Again, not a very good hand at all, but at this point, I had a pretty good feel for the table, so I don't exactly hate getting pretty wide in late position. Anyway, I go heads up to a flop against Francisco, who calls from the straddle of King 8-7 with two clubs. I've got bottom pair, as well as some potential backdoor possibilities to either improve or represent strength on certain runouts. So with that in mind, I continue with a small bet, and Francisco calls. We get some help right away on the turn as the nine of diamonds appears, giving me two pair on a board that I'd often continue bluffing on. So when he checks it over to me, I see no reason to go for some value, make it $1,500 to go. And we get some bad news as Francisco check raises to 5,500. <sighs> Another disappointing situation now. Just when things seem like they were going better, I feel like we're getting cooler a little bit here. He could have easily improved with hands like 6-5 or maybe even Jack-10 that calls with a gut shot on the flop. And of course, sets, better two pairs, etc. But we could also improve to a full house on the river, which would be worth a lot of money in position, especially against Francisco, who doesn't shy away from action. And if a club comes, we could also represent that since, you know, it's pretty unlikely he's got clubs after check raising the turn. So anyway, I do decide to call in position, and what do you know, we get no help on the river. Not even a card that we can attempt to bluff on. It's the three of hearts. This time, Francisco bets some amount. I think it was in the neighborhood of $16,000, and I release right away. As you guys can see, we did get a little bit unlucky having two pair against a better two pair, but nice hand, Francisco. Not many nicer people I'd rather lose a pot to. But yeah, that brings an end to this particular stream. As you guys saw, things didn't go extremely well for me. We started to turn it around a little bit near the end, but not enough, and I end up losing on this day. But as always, I do hope you guys enjoyed the hands. So uh, back in the apartment, it's the next day. I was gonna film an outro last night, but I was pretty tired and uh, we ended up playing a good amount of time after the stream ended. So ended up just crashing here at the house. And that's the reason why we have a next day recap. But anyway, as you guys saw, that didn't go very well for me. Felt like I didn't necessarily play my best, but I also didn't run very well. I didn't really win any huge pots and uh, I felt like I never really had anything aside from that flush against Johnny. Usually when that's the case, you're not going to win a lot of money and of course that's what happened for me. Across both streams, I ended up losing around $20,000, so not a very good result. But that's the nature of playing big games, you're either going to lose or win a lot of money. I'm getting a little bit sick of uh, not having great sessions on the bigger games, but you know, can't control that. Just gotta try to play my best and hopefully the cards will be more in my favor one of these times. But 
Anyway, as always, thank you guys for watching and don't forget about those free rolls coming up this Halloween weekend. Uh, $10,000 up for grabs on Club GG. Yours truly will be in there and uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So that's it for today, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for the support and I'll see you all next time. Peace.